What's up, Illini? I'm Peyton Westner, and welcome to ISN Now, the official podcast of Illini Sports Night. This is episode one, our show debut. It feels great to be talking with you all, and we have a great opening episode for you. As with most of our shows, we're going to be talking to past, present, and prospective fighting Illini student-athletes and coaches. In some cases, it's going to be catching up with Illini greats and how they have been doing after college. Others, as this one, we're going to be checking in with current fighting Illini. So without another moment to spare, let's welcome in my guest at this time. He's helped the fighting Illini men's tennis team to three consecutive NCAA tournament appearances. And whenever you come to Atkins Tennis Center, you feel his presence through his passion and energy. It's Zeke Clark, everybody. Zeke, how are you? Thank you so much for your time today. Of course, man. I'm uh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. Of course, I know with everything going on off the courts right now, it's important for me to ask how you and your family are doing during this time. I would assume you've returned home to Tulsa, and what have your last couple of weeks been like? Yeah, yeah. Every everybody back home doing well. Uh, parents, siblings, everybody's good. Um, definitely doing what we uh, what we can to stay stay safe and stay smart during this uh, super uncertain time. So, um, you know, my, my training schedule has been um, obviously been thrown off a little bit just with things, uh, things not being open. So I'm doing, I'm doing what I can uh, right now. Honestly, more of my focus has shifted to, uh, you know, more of my off court uh, fitness, getting stronger. I'm always tough, not being able to, not being able to practice like, like I want to, but, uh, you know, most important thing right now is, is staying safe and making sure, you know, my, my family and, and everybody else is, is doing okay, too. So, you've got to stay smart during a time like this. Oh, most definitely. And for it to be April and no tennis is, is so eerie to me. I can't imagine what it feels like for you. Oh, I know your favorite things away from the sport is often hanging out with friends and traveling. But because of social distancing and that becoming a social custom, how have you been spending your free time? Have you developed any hobbies? Are you watching a lot of Netflix? What is what have you been doing uh, outside of the strength and conditioning training? I'm the, I, I love being around other people. So right now it's, it's a very tough time for me. Um, don't get me wrong. I love I've loved spending spending a lot of time with my family and, and catching up with them. You know it's. Um, right now I'm not, not necessarily used to, uh, having this time with them. Um, so I'm trying to spend as much time with that, with them as I can. And, you know, it's been tough not, not, uh, being really being able to catch up with friends back home. Like, like I would like to, but I've really just been hanging out, um, you know, making sure, uh, I'm, I'm covering all my bases in school. I'm def I definitely need to, uh, see what I can do and look, look more into, um, finding something else to kind of, kind of fill time right now. You know, I, Right now is usually a time where we're so busy, um, you know, traveling and, and playing matches, and now uh, all of a sudden we have all this free time. Speaking of traveling, I know you like to do your fair share of getting out of the house and exploring. I, I like to do that myself. So let me defer to your expertise here, Zeke. Where have been some of your favorite places to go travel and explore, whether a part of tennis or just tourism, just visiting as a tourist? I've been I've been so lucky to. Um, you know, be able to travel as much as I, as much as I have playing this, playing the sport that I love. So, um, for that, I'll, I'll be, I'll be forever grateful, but, um, you know, some of my, some of my favorite places that I've been to Australia, I think is, is definitely been top of the charts. Um, that was an unbelievable, unbelievable experience and to go play the, play the junior Australian open there and, you know, get to see Melbourne and, uh, go out and see the city was, was great. You know, I, uh, back home, it's, um, everybody thinks Oklahoma is a lot of nothing, but um, to be honest, there's there's so many so many fun, cool places to see here. So um, getting out when I when I can here is something something that I like to do. But of course, right now it's just a just a weird time. So whenever I come to Tulsa, what would you recommend I do? I know whenever everything calms down and becomes more normal, hopefully. I, the only thing I know Tulsa, excuse my ignorance, is they have a Double A AA baseball team, minor league. But what, if I come to Tulsa, what would you say are some of the the, the key spots or the hot spots that I need to go check out? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we do have a. I think they're. Uh, I think you're right. I think they're Double A uh, baseball team, the Tulsa Drillers, who um, they opened up a new uh, new baseball park. I think like uh, four or five years ago now. So that's relatively new, and it's a pretty cool spot. So, so you can catch a Drillers game. That's that's tons of fun. Um, also, within the last year, they've 
opened up this new, I think it's like a $100 million project, um, but it's called it's called The Gathering Place, which is a, just a huge, huge park uh, with, um, I mean, they have rec basketball courts, they have um, tons of different uh, playgrounds and restaurants, and um, it's just a, a really cool place that, that brings, a, brings the community together, so um, that, that's definitely a, uh, a great spot to hit, and then um, I mean, there's so many, so many good um, Oklahoma uh, local restaurants that are are tough to uh, tough to beat. All right, so I need to get, make my way to Melbourne, and then I also need to go to Tulsa. Putting it down the the bucket list right now. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Speaking about your family and spending time, I know your father Toby is someone who has really influenced your tennis career i'm sure this is kind of a loaded question but how would you describe the impact he has had on you you know it, it's honestly kind of hard to put into words um you know everything that uh that he's that he's done for me uh i mean really both my parents um it's it's unbelievable that they're they've been able to to put so much so much time um and resources into my into my tennis and and really the to my other siblings as well um the the support and you know love they've they've given to all of us and support and and, and letting us you know pursue the things that we want to pursue um I, you know I'll, I'll forever be be so grateful for them um and my dad putting a racket in my hand at such an early age and uh you know never really never really forcing me to 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 continue to play tennis but kind of allowing me to to fall in love with the game and then and then being there for assistance really anytime anytime that i needed uh, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful for him and, and traveling to, to tournaments with me and, um, you know, kind of showing, showing me the way at, at an early age. Uh, I, uh, tennis has guided me to so many different places and I've met so many great people as, um, as a result of it. Um, uh, and, and without him, um, doing that and guiding me, I, uh, I, there's no way I'd be the, the same person that I am today. I can tell you have a great support team. I mean, your mother, Julie, uh, then you have your three siblings, Tim, Grace, and Lily. Do you remember the first time that you fell in love with tennis? It's hard to finger point exactly the time. I was like, wow, this is something I I really love doing. But whenever I whenever I had free time when I was little, I was like, all right, this is this is what I wanted to do. It was it was just such a such a fun, um, enjoyable activity for me. I that's just something I've always felt and still feel to this day. We all go through through very stressful times in our lives, but tennis has kind of been an outlet for me just to be myself and forget about everything else that's that's going on and and just to be able to enjoy. We can certainly tell the amount of joy and and fun you have out there on the courts. I mean, one one of the things that I mentioned off the top that I noticed this season when I've covered the team a little bit is you bring so much passion when you are not battling whether it's singles or doubles. You're picking up team morale on the side. And I'm just going to say it, you are probably my favorite player to watch in both college and professional ranks just because of those intangibles you bring. So I have to know, when did you develop that competition-driven emotional attitude and that intensity? You know, I, I feel like that, that's something I can, I can really credit to, to my dad. He, I mean, early on, he, we, we never really focused that. I mean, we, we would hit a lot of balls, but, I mean, technique and um, things that, usually a lot of coaches dial in on it at an early age. He, we just weren't really that focused on It's more just giving full effort and doing everything I can. Um, so him instilling that in me at an early age is, um, you know, I've now I've been doing it and given everything I've got for longer than a decade. And it, it just kind of becomes a part of you, whether you're training, whether you're, you're in a match, it just becomes, becomes a part of what you do. But then also, you know, I'm not a big guy and I've always been told that, um, I, I don't have the professional tennis build. I have, because of my, my stature, I'm not, I'm only going to be able to make it to a certain level. And I know that one, that's, that's not true. There's, there's nothing that's saying that, okay, just because I'm five, seven, I, I can't make it as a professional tennis player, but there are also other things I, I have to do better than uh, guys who might have that, um, you know, that, that might physically oppose a little bit more than I can, whether that be their six, six or stronger, whatever. So there, there are other intangibles that, that I have to bring to the table in order to, to compete with guys like that. 
and you know my my mentality and my fight and my drive and my passion are are things that I can always bring to the table and I've I've really owned that. It kind of used to intimidate me a little bit when when people would tell me that they're, I I'll almost cap out at a certain level just because of my physical uh, nature and uh, you know that that's really that's really driven me to to really own those those intangibles and um, you know when I'm whenever I'm playing at Atkins with hundreds of people behind me uh, it, it really comes out and uh, there's nothing nothing more special than that. I, absolutely, I think you've definitely proven those whether they're scouts or whoever's telling you that that you're just continuing to prove them wrong every day i mean 83 wins and three seasons and change uh we're joined by zeke clark here on isn now and from afar zeke i can really tell the great player coach relationship you have with head coach brad dancer what has it been like to play under him and have such great success together brad and marcos have been father figures to me since since day one since the since the day they they started recruiting me they uh, they're such a special uh special duo i mean they complement each other so well and i credit so much of my growth growth to them and you know something i i will always be so grateful um to them for uh, i feel like they they've believed in me in my my abilities since since day one and that's something I feel like a lot of a lot of coaches kind of doubted my my ability to play at the highest level of collegiate tennis and and beyond. And, and Brad and Marcos have have never doubted me one bit. And that that belief maybe I didn't have in myself to begin with. And they they instilled that that belief in me, and I've become a much more confident player, uh, become a much much more confident person because of them. Playing playing for them is something I, I wouldn't trade trade for the world and not being able to uh to finish things out um this season uh you know that that really hurt because you know play bat, going to battle not only with my teammates but with brad and marcos is 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 my favorite thing to do so um to not be able to do that fully this season this season hurt but um you know i very much like my parents and my, my siblings my family uh i i consider brad and marcos family as well brad specifically he told me how he considers you and Alex Kovacevic like yin and yang in a way and this season alone you two normally played on courts side by side and while you're getting fired up Kova is normally stoic and calm at time or most of the time I should say what's the dynamic you and Kova have had maybe not necessarily on the court but away from it um you know it's it's funny Kova and I have been playing tournaments with each other since we were 10 years old uh and so I've I've known him forever and uh we weren't necessarily the closest of friends in uh, in juniors. I mean, I would see him around, and uh, we were we were definitely cool. But I, I wouldn't have considered him one of my one of my good friends, kind of on the junior circuit. But um, you know, I I knew him, and if we saw each other, we'd say hey. And and uh, it was we were playing in a in a professional event right before it was the summer before I came to school, and uh, I played Koba and. We just had an epic battle, and uh, and after the match, I I had to check in with him. I was like, "Hey, man, like, uh, what's your what's your situation with school? Like, have you have you been talking to coaches, or or what's your what's your deal?" And uh, you know, him and his his classic Kova fashion, very laid back. He's like, "Man, to be honest, I I haven't really talked to very many coaches. Um, I uh, I think I'll, I'll start talking to coaches soon." And this was our senior year of high school, so pretty much everybody committed and and Kova was like I think I'll probably just wait till January start talking to some coaches and, and we'll see where I end up and I was like man you need to you you have to take a visit to Illinois you have to I'll go with you I'll I'll do anything like let's get you on campus and, and see how you like it and sure enough he did and he took a visit two weeks later and loved it and and committed to us and uh you know ever since then you know we've we've formed a, a friendship and a and a brotherhood that you know, I would consider Kova one of my best friends, and uh, I've just been been very very lucky to have him uh, the last last four years. Because, like you said, we have we have very very different personalities, but I think that's what brings us together, and and why we've been so good for each other. Is you know sometimes I get a little bit too riled up, and and he he calms me down, and sometimes he he needs somebody to kind of bring him up a little bit, and uh, so I can be that that person to him and he can also be that person for me. So 
having played really next to him for a lot of my college career at, at one and three, it's great playing next to him because if I need a little a little uh, pump up or you know just to see him so calm out there doing his thing gets me in the right place. And then sometimes if he's a little down and he needs a little bit of energy, then then I can do that for him. So uh, you know, Kova's probably been one of the most unexpected <laughs> best friends I've I've ever made. I'm uh, I'm very very grateful to have him because he's been uh, you know, he's been he's been amazing. Wow, that that's such a cool story that you two had this epic game and and then ask him where have you decided about college and you suggest Illinois and then the rest is all the rest is almost history. Switching gears a little bit, something that'll affect both you and him is uh, at the end of March the NCAA making the ruling that all spring sports athletes are given an extra year of eligibility. I know this affects every coach and student athlete differently because everyone's situation is different. You have aspirations to play tennis professionally. I, I know Kova does. And after a, a very successful four years for both of you, I guess speaking for yourself, Zeke, what is your thought process, if you wouldn't mind sharing? Yeah, you know, I uh, I mean, this is a, I mean, an unprecedented situation. Um, at least in our lifetimes, we'll, we might not deal with something like this ever again. Um, so this is a, just a kind of a weird deal for, for everybody, coaches, players, um, you know, people making these rulings, everybody. Uh, it's not just athletes that are affected. It's, it's people, it's my parents. It's people with, you know, normal jobs. It's, it's everybody. Um, so to say that this is just really affected senior student athletes is uh, just not, not really the case, but in, in our particular situation, you know, with this, with the NCAA making the decision to grant us another year um, puts us all in a, you know, there's nothing I loved more than, than playing, playing for Brad, playing for Mar playing for Marcos, playing for the university of Illinois, playing for my teammates. Um, so for me, that, that decision is, is very easy with what I'm going to do. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to come back and uh, that decision for me is, n is not very difficult. For, for some others, it, it it is because we were, I mean, we were going to give everything we had for the rest of the season, but we also in the back of our minds knew that we only had a couple months left to play in college tennis, and then we were going to be done. And your mind slowly starts to turn to what's next, and now to have a whole other year to then play another season puts puts us in a in a little bit of an awkward position. My, my decision, it's already been – already been made but it's just going to take time for um not only our team but all the other people that are in the same situation as us to figure out what the what the next step is um but you know brad and marcos have been so supportive through it all is they they want us to do what's best for us and if that's moving on then that's moving on but you know they've been very open with um i mean they would love for us all to come back but um again they haven't put any pressure on us which is um, exactly what you would, what, exactly what you'd like out of a coach. So. I'm sure Fighting Illini fans everywhere are really excited. You have made your decision. You'll be coming back. Obviously, those 83 career single wins, that total will get even higher over the next year and likely reach triple digits. But Zeke, it was my great pleasure to catch up with you. I cannot accentuate how excited I am that you're going to be returning and having even more memorable moments over at Atkins Tennis Center. Thank you so much for making the time. I, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for your time. There you have it. All Day Zeke will be back for another season, which is definitely something to look forward to. What else can you look forward to? The next edition of ISN Now. Duh. I'll be back with another interview come Friday as we'll be joined by men's tennis coach Brad Dancer. Brad has had a tremendous impact on this program. We're going to sit down and talk about his mentality after this NCAA ruling. Until then... This would normally be the time I'd tell you to rate, review, and subscribe in due time. I've submitted the paperwork form, whatever you want to call it, to get ISN Now, where you listen to your podcasts. Once we get the thumbs up from iTunes, Spotify, and all the other providers, you'll be hearing from me on social media. Oh, social media. Go ahead and give Illini Sports Night a follow on Twitter, at UI7ISN. And go over to Facebook and give us a like. If you want to get in touch with me, at PCWESNER, at PCWESNER is the handle. I want to hear your thoughts, maybe some ideas, potential guests who you want to hear from. All I can be told is no. 